Yehova Malak Olam Olamad Yehova Malak Yami Rages The Megalogai of Yahweh Lilian Elohim is always alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest and peace be unto the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the invaluable mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, being far away from the path of lies, but constantly being under the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, who is nothing but the Spirit of Truth. Let's come back to our consciousness to realize are we truly walking according to the order and the stability what Christ our Lord our God set forth for these churches? Or are we walking according to our own standards in this unseen angelic conflict? The order and stability given to us is to worship the Lord God in spirit and in biblical truth. Because God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth. And being believers in this church age, our privilege is to use the privacy of our priesthood through rebound 1 John 1 9 so that we could constantly make sure that we are standing in the position where Lord God the Father has placed us in Christ. Our positional sanctification, our position in Christ, where Satan knows very well, if we emerge in this position and not just walk but march, in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then we could easily trample Satan under our feet. We could destroy each and everything that goes against the high knowledge of Bible doctrine. Since we have been there always in the wall of fire, as Zechariah 2.5 teaches to us, there is not a way that you can break that hedge or wall of fire when you are constantly in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. When you are in your position holding firm to it because the soldiers we are for Christ captain is our Lord till he could command us we being soldiers we need to take our position and Satan comes with its cunning fables so that we shall no longer hold our position but rather we should slip away from it thus it doesn't want you to walk in the order and stability set forth for us in the Bible therefore Satan trembles at those believers who are coming to look the word of the Lord my God in the gala exposition of the scriptures 
in the proper exegesis, isagogics and categories of the word. And those who come to know the truth, they change their thinking to walk according to the truth. And when they are walking according to the truth, the word of the Lord our God gives them such a great assurance that the angel of Jehovah encircles them, circuits them, so that not just worrying about the details of life, but rather they will be equipped for the battle of Lord God. And when we are in the angel of Jehovah being encircled in him, in our new position in Christ, being sealed by the Holy Spirit of Lord God until the day of redemption. And if we are in Christ, and we are in controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then who could be against us? The enemy would attack by the simple lesson what we learn from the book of Genesis chapter 3. When Eve was alone, it doesn't have enough guts to attack you when, you when Eve was with her husband. Her husband Adam would have straight away rejected. And in the long course of time, Eve always, when she was alone, this beguiling nature, Satan, comes to attack. And that's why when we are alone, you have to be always aware. The lessons what they might have learned when Christ our Lord of God taught them every day in the cool of the breeze she would have been concentrating on them and she would have understood not to add, not to distort, neither to neglect the emphasis. When Satan says Elohim rather than Lord God Eve removes the great title of my Lord, Yahweh, and just follows Satan to call God rather than Lord God. And now she loves to add something, what Christ my Lord, my Rock, my God said. He said, you shall not eat, but she adds in a curiosity, you shall not even touch. And the third time she emphasizes that which was to be emphasized, that she doesn't, but she emphasizes that which she is thinking, lest she can die. But the Lord God said, surely you shall die. Dear brethren, this is how Satan beguiles when you are alone. In that case it was Eve, in your case it is now you, if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we have been constantly mandated to be under the guard of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It is he who encircles you. Do not break the wall of fire because Satan cannot even touch you. It knows very well when you are in that wall of fire, you have been encircled by Yahweh Elohim. And the angel of Yahweh Elohim, my Christ, my Lord, my rock. And Satan knows very well it cannot even touch you. But when you are alone, by that we meant to say in the churches, we should be very much blessed. Because every believer has been indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and subsequently by the Son, and then by God the Father. We call it as a trinity. But he says he begins with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and Lord God, the Holy Spirit, cannot operate in you until and unless you operate in the Spirit of Truth. He is the Holy Spirit of Truth. And constantly the angels proclaimed in Isaiah 6, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One is the Lord God Almighty, and the earth is full of His glory. As the waters covers the ocean, so shall the knowledge of my God shall cover this earth. It happens in the millennium, but in the due time, prior to the church age itself, the angels proclaimed the earth is full of the glory of the Lord. How it could be when the earth is belonging to Satan by the fall of man who lost his rulership to Satan. How it could be full of glory. It is nothing but dear brother and every individual believer when they are witnessing the truth accurately as it is in the word of the Lord my God from the original languages of the scriptures. That believer is the glory of God on this earth. And right from the beginning, 
through Adam when you can look from there on when we can find following the genealogy of Adam that is believing section of line that we had Abel in the place of Abel Seth and then we had one man who comes as a knock the man who walked with Lord God so much he pleased him that Lord God took him off Lakak seized him as a violent a lope between a lover what he what he has towards a lover and he wants to take her home that's a lope that's Lakak that's the way how Enoch was taken and then we come with Noah the preacher of righteousness and from there on the flood and the story we know very well we get up with Abraham and the prayer we call through Moses the father of Abraham Isaac and the one who calls as Israel Jacob we call all these people in the believing section so right from there on starting with Abel we look the earth is the glory of the Lord but in the time of Isaiah we find many people diverting out not trembling at his message but rather ridiculing the fear of Lord God and loving to do that which is not said for them to do changing the precepts of the mind of Christ into their own thinking yet in each and every generation he had those men who will be the glory of Lord God yet in this generation when we look in the present Christendom the church age coming between the 69th and the 78th week being suddenly inserted because of the failure of the missionary work by the Israelites the people for whom he has dedicated the entire chapter of Isaiah 49 and then he gives them the instruction of Isaiah 50 the tongue of the learned the servant of the Lord who is nothing but Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the way how he was faithful to them Again in chapter 51 he goes on to teach Arise awake I have given you the mouth of the learned I put my words in you Go back and do the work Such great Lord God has given to them To be the witnesses of truth But they failed But when we come to the church age Our scenario is completely different He said now you cannot be alone Like the way how Eve was when you are alone, Satan loves to attack you, but you have been constantly believing in Christ. And when you have believed in Christ, you have been constantly indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, make sure you do not grieve it, nor squelch it, neither wax it, nor put to test or lie to it. But rather, in return, if ever you live, you live in the Spirit. If ever you walk, you walk in the Spirit. And if ever you are walking, he says in Galatians 5.26, I zoma numati numati kasto I can. If ever you are walking, that is peripatao, he says, you have to be in the standards of marching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have one step further ahead so that we cannot give excuses. Being not aware about this intensified stage of the angelic conflict, being not aware to be ignorant about our enemy you have to be very careful about this we cannot be ignorant about our enemy your enemy like a roaring lion he wants to devour you the attack of satan not to get this bible in our hands it failed because the prophecy of matthew 16 the gates of hell cannot prevail the church how it could go back to prevail the content of the lord now the church is Eve. It is not left alone. It has been given Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Christ being the head of the Lord of a God. And in that church we find you and me. And every believer is not been given alone. He has the indwelling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in them so that they could be led into all the truth and glorify the Lord God and be filled with the glory of my Christ till we could go back home not that we are going to get our rewards when we walk according to order and stability of Bible doctrine 1 Corinthians 3.14 and again we have Colossians 3.24 but we have something greater than that 
Even in Revelation 2 and 3, you have those rewards to get those who are faithful till the end. Those who endure, we're going to get such and such things. But he says, every day, every day you have to be renewed. Every day. Do you know what the power is? In the present, scientists, they're able to find about this physical anatomy of this body. And they say every six months, the cells get regenerated and they get something new. The body doesn't know till you could say you're so much old. But it goes back to be every six months renewed and it will be once again new and fresh. It's our mental perception of thinking which is making us to become old. But with what mechanism Christ our Lord of our God has created this man out of this dust? No man can understand till we could go back home and realize what a powerful weapon was this body to the Lord. But you had in your own mind to put blocks and think this is the restriction, this is the restriction, this is the restriction. And he never followed the word of the Lord my God because my Lord my God says in Matthew 4.4, 4, you are not surviving on the food what you eat, but you are surviving by the very word of God. And there we read, when Eve ate the fruit, she was tempted to eat and she ate. The same temptation was given to Christ. But my Lord knew we don't, we don't live by the, word, by, by the food what we eat, but by the word what we eat. That is nothing but the Rimata declaration of the pastor teacher. And he taught for us that this physical flesh entirely depends upon the word of the Lord. And now when he has given us his spirit, it's breath by breath to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and breath by breath to renovate the standards of your thinking. If that six months it takes the body to recover it back once again, to, re to regenerate and to renew, for every six months they regenerate. But for us it's every day being in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to look the standards of truth and enjoy the standards of Bible doctrine and being renewed in our spirit and understanding this angelic conflict and going to do the work of Lord God in making disciples of all the nations. And Satan knows very well when a believer is taking in the word of the Lord of a God, it's not now. The things pertaining to what? The gates of hell they wanted to destroy the church, but rather in return it is then the believer is now shaking the gates of hell, the foundations of it, to throw them out. That's the power given to every believer. It is not that the gates of hell would love to prevail, but it is in return now the believer is using, not as a defensive mechanism, but as an offensive mechanism. He's using the sword of the Spirit, the word of the Lord, to destroy. And as we read that in Ezekiel 27.9, when we unsheath our sword, they will come to know and they will say, just, we are just man. We are just a might force. We are not God. That's what they said. In Ezekiel 28, 9, we read that. Because the governor of this earth, who are that time under the Satan, who could go back to continue to Tyrus, but there he says, who was just a Malak, and Lord God the Father asks him a question to the prophet Ezekiel and says, are you more wiser than Daniel? You are not. When the people of this crowd, the church age generation, will come and they unsheath this sword and they beat you to pieces, that time you will realize. And you will say, we are nowhere mightier, we are nothing, we are just God. And the word used there is 410. That is meant to say you are just not even equivalent to the flesh of this world. But we being in the flesh, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, transforming from glory to glory, calling us to realize the role of humanity as the flesh is with flesh and blood and other things. We are called completely to transform, not to have none effect upon the flesh, but rather to transform ourselves like angels and to be filled with the light of the word of the Lord of our God and be always ready to give an answer in season and out of season. And to be available to use our defensive weapons, that's what the world is. Defensive weapons which have been given for you in the complete armory of Ephesians 6. You have been protected in that. 
Now use your offen offensive weapon and rage a great war in this world. And for that cause, we have been kept alive. The things that have been given for us completely in the word of the Lord my God is to rage a great war is to put upon such a kind of a great war that the world should be ashamed. That's why we have been given the completed canal scripture. That's why we have been given the only offensive weapon, the word of the Lord, my God. Therefore, we have to be readily available from top to bottom every day for the word of the Lord, my God. If it is not the word, you cannot survive. But Satan comes with the tactics. It is love to give you anything apart from the word. Therefore, in the present Christendom, the way how it wanted to destroy the Bible, it couldn't. But we have the Bible in our hands. But now it is the duty of every pastor teacher to go back and dig the word in the original language of the scriptures and train them up. So that you have been given such great power in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to move now, not to have any influence in the flesh. Necrosate, Colossians 3, 5, you cannot mortify and be happy. That's the wrong translation in the English, but you have that in the Greek, necrosate, put to death, necros. And when you put to death, and when you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have been completely transformed now to be like the angel. To be completely filled in the light of the word of the Lord. And Satan trembles, it knows very well. When you're graduating in spite of all the tests, you will be a winner believer, it knows very well. You will be a believer who is getting maximum glorification for Lord God. Because you're not worried in any details of life, no matter from wherever the things pertaining to a threat like Goliath may come to your life. Since you are every day in the prayer like David, every day I have been preparing for the battle of the Lord because you have already proven your examination in beer test, you have already proven your examination in the lion test, and now you find this uncircumcised Philistine who is also one among like the animal. So why you fear? You have prepared faithfully with your slingshot, you have prepared faithfully with the stones. Stones represent the word of the Lord, slingshot represents Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They did not come in a huge armor way as the Goliath came in his entire attire of soldier and he came along with the sword which was very heavy. And looking upon him he says, do you think I am a dog? He came with staff. <laughs> the battle belongs to the Lord. He can use the idle instruments of the shepherd. That may be very not of having such kind of a great authority, but he knows the slingshot and the stone is enough. He seemed fit to deliver in such manner, he delivered. In fact, indeed, many of the great examples in the Bible, when Gideon, when he blew the trumpet with those 300 men at the, war, at the noise of that, they themselves killed, we look into the army. When Joshua called seven days, seven times to blow the trumpet, so far, when he gave that trumpet blow, what happened? The walls destroyed. This resembles very unusual, but it's a fact. Because that's the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's how Lord God, the Father, uses every believer. Even now in this church age, we are ordinary. We may not have the strength or the endurance or the power of what we read in Mark 5 for those demons they had towards that man. But when he came to the right mind, he went to go back and tell to all the Decapolis, the ten states, the ten cities, not just in one place. And that he was not just asked to go, he was asked to go and tell, but he went along to Caruso to preach. There we look. Though the man has been possessed by such demonic powers, the strength of the demons, Yet, we may not have that. We are just ordinary. But we have been given extraordinary power through the word of the Lord, my God, so that you can say, whatsoever you are born on the earth will be born in the heaven. Whatsoever religion on this earth will be religion in the heaven. That's it. And the power, what you have through your tongue. Therefore, he says for us, 
you will have greater wisdom than your enemy in Psalms 119 in verses 97 through following. How? Only through the word. When you remove the path of lies. Therefore, in this church age, we have been given an order and a stability always to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though He dwells in you permanently, His fellowship is temporary. Whenever you sin, you lose it. Therefore, your position in Christ is what Satan always wants to shake it off. It causes you to have fear, worry, anxiety. This is what our Satan makes. And you know, when you worry, there is certain kind of a sickness which usually develops for this man. And the same structure of the body coagulates themselves and they produce such sort of a sickness hardening your finger, hardening your nerves of your fingers. And there is a particular word for that. We shall look at because when you have been fearing and worrying and looking upon the details of life, this is what it happens. Therefore, dear brethren, that sickness, what has been called in the English is Duputrans Contractua. And that's what you can find that in the Wikipedia. Deputrans Constructure. If you simply worry, if you go on to look upon the details of life as major issues. But if you worry for the word of the Lord by God to honor his word and to glorify him on this earth, you will not even have any sicknesses for your flesh. Because Lord God the Father would cause you to become like angel. Because the word of the Lord of a God will be the marrow to your bones. The word of the Lord my God will be the flesh to your health or to health to your flesh. And the word of the Lord my God will be your eyesight falling upon your retina. What else you take? What else you want? Because man does not live by bread alone but by every word. In that occasion Satan failed. She wanted to become something by eating that fruit, being tempted. But here Satan also comes to tempt the humanity of my Christ to look. Since he is in the flesh, he may also fall for sin, as many today fall for some lustful patterns of their old sin nature. Throwing apart the word of the Lord my God and looking into the details of life. So the same way it came to tempt my Christ, but when it came, what did my Christ did? Though Satan quoted the scripture, it wants to discord or it wants to misquote, it wants to distort, it has to do many things. That Christ my Lord was in the right mind in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, right from the birth. Till to be on the cross for three hours and then left. The fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being a guardian or a being a joint helper, being the Sunani Lambonani for us. Lord God, the Holy Spirit has been given so that we shall not fall into the temptations of Satan. You know, when you are far away from the word of the Lord, my God, you are fallen for temptations. That's it. If you ignore to take in the word of the Lord, my God, you are falling for such depincher, conjectures, sicknesses. Because Satan loves to produce in your mind fear. It loves to produce in your mind worry. It loves to produce in you anxiety. And you know, the extension of the work of Satan in the flesh is nothing but the world. So it loves to give you priority to the world. But those who are in Christ, what the word says, if you have risen with Christ, what do you say? You have to seek those things that are above, not the things of this earth. So when you have been risen in Christ, we have to call to look, what is my plan? What is my life? What is my worth? God the Father has called that he has been filled the earth with the glory of Lord God. So shall I be one among that glory to shine in truth? Shall I be that glory? Or will I try to become that glory? Prior to that, Satan comes in various schemes and strategies and tactics. The first thing not to believe in Christ, if you ever believe in Christ, second thing, see that you don't come to learn the word of the Lord my God. And for that cause it rises your ego. 
it causes to come in you the pride, the arrogance. The same concept what it had to give to Eve. And what it gave, you will become like God. Because it had that concept to become like the Most High God. Even the same thing it gives into the minds of these unbelievers, shining like a light wherewith it is transforming itself into the angel of light, but which is not, that's metaschematis zovans. And when they're doing that, the world is believing those miracles, those signs, those wonders of Satan, and they're interested to become more disciples for that. And at the end, they would love to call and tell us as well. For example, in the believing church, if the pastor teacher who is not training them up to be the glory of Lord God, wherewith he says in Ephesians 3, now through the church, the manifold wisdom of Lord God has to be taught and every believer is a professor to the angels and pastor teacher is the dean and church is the university, they have to come to learn the manifold wisdom of God. And yet if there is no love between the brethren, yet if there is no oneness to take the position in Christ, yet to take the matter of the church into the court of the law rather than finding that cataracts of man who is mature enough in the word of the Lord my God and solve your disputes. And when you stand in the unbelieving section of the court of law before unbelievers and if you would love to say come to my church you will have peace. Do you know what an unbeliever would slap on your face and say First, clear the sheer rut what you have in you and in your church. Then talk about my religion, he would say. That's how Satan comes up with its plan, with its pride, with its ego, with its cunning fable, subtlety. The way how Satan does first to put in you the doubt, the way how Satan does to rule, and many of the churches today which are fighting in the court of law because of the reasons of their elders. If they are diligently read Deuteronomy 26, they would come to know Deuteronomy 27, which says for them, the elders, if you want to be, first you have to engrave upon the stones the complete law of the Lord. If not, you are not qualified to become elder. But these people think by the majority of their group of family names or by the majority of their vote which has not even been done in honesty but in prejudiced thoughts they come back and they think we have won the matter so we shall be the elders that's what the message as i gave them you people do not tremble at the presence of lord's word but in the heaven the doorposts, the inanimate things, and the voice of a seraphim that tremble because they're standing before the presence of the Lord. And you ridicule because you don't have the word of the Lord my God in you to fulfill the principles. Have you ever written at least once the entire law to become the elder of the church? Far less you can go back and grave it or engrave upon the stones. And you can say, yes, I have done enough to be qualified as an elder. I think your entire lifetime is not enough to grave the complete word on the stones. From Genesis 1.1, if you could go back and consider the Deuteronomy passages up till the Torah, you cannot. Every alphabet of the Hebrew to grave and to put it, it would be tough time for you. But now we have the completed word of the Lord my God from Genesis to Revolution. How can you grave upon that on your stone so that you can become elders to the church? Which you cannot do, which you cannot have. Leading the glory of church into the hands of unbelievers so that there the subtlety of Satan not understanding you people want to get into the fight, want to get into involving of the things which is a great happiness to Satan. Satan would be very happy looking your matters to be in the court. Satan would be very happy when the court, when the church has been divided, not having unity in them. Satan would be very happy when there is no revival, but only for survival the pastors are coming. 
It has its own set of group of men who haven't been in the spirit of truth, but rather they would think they're real in the spirit of truth and come to discourse you weekly ones. These are nothing but satanic pastors. These are nothing but the agents of Satan who come for the survival of belly, who come for the need where they think, without this, how can I survive? So better I support one committee and look back into the matter and be happy with my, with my life and be content to be salary, what I get so that my children can be happy and I can be happier at the end of the day. And not to raise the issues which are grievous, not to consider them, not to find a solution for it, whether they look it, take it, consider it or not, you are the servant of Lord God. Tell them the strategy of Satan, let them change or not, it's left to them, you have blown the trumpet. But the pastor doesn't have enough guts to talk because he's worried about his survival. And from where they come? They come from the hands of Satan, not from the right hand of Lord God the Father. They come to talk about the sheer words of oratory. They come not with a burden to make grammatias, every believer, joining them as disciples. They come to preach weekly once, never to come and preach every day. And these are the people who are trying to break the heads of the Lord. And Satan knows very well it cannot even touch you. If it starts to inculcate in your mind to neglect the word of the Lord, it has achieved its success. When Moses was said by God the Father, deliver my people from them completely, in Exodus 3, 10 and 11, he says, how could I, who I am? And then Lord God the Father gave him a sign saying that you will come back with all those people and worship on the same mountain. If that was the case, if you and I would have been, they would have asked, Lord, I am saying where I have to go to Pharaoh or who I am to go to Pharaoh and you are saying and giving me a sign that I will come back and worship you on the same mountain. Doesn't our human mind prop up in those terms? The point is, he did not believe till he could show some signs and wonders by the Lord. And he comes now to say, I am a dumb man, I cannot talk. In the word meant to say, I have a speech which makes me to tremble or to make to be uttering the words not in fluency. And Lord God the Father says, who has given the mouth? And you know very well how many signs he has been proven. When Moses would have taken the thought that Lord God is the one who is going to take care for us, not only to deliver them from the hand of Egypt, the Pharaoh, but also we shall come back and worship in this mountain. You know what a powerful strength it is for us. Because battle belongs to the Lord. That's the simple logic there. In the same manner, Satan also knows very well, when you take in the word of the Lord of a God, with God the Father, we look in Luke 137 as well, with the Rimata declaration of the Lord God, nothing is impossible. Even we being just in the same flesh as Moses was, obeying the voice of the Lord God and doing his work, even he would deliver out his people in this church age who would be the maximum glory of Christ, becoming winner believers, passing down all the stages of their examinations from spiritual self-esteem to spiritual autonomy, and then to pass down the spiritual maturity in Christ. Passing down in all the stages, we would come back and deliver them to the Lord's glory. If we as pastor teachers believe that through the word of the Lord my God and go back to look and, and fight the Lord's battle, only in the spirit of truth, we would achieve great achievement to the Lord as long as we have breath on these nostrils or as long as Lord God the Father seemeth fit for our work on this earth to preach the acceptable year of God, of the Lord. In our time, like the way how John the Baptist was, in our time in the church age in this 21st century, 
to preach, to caruso, to go back and discourse and teach and to go on to inculcate in them the teaching of Lord God, which is acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Not only just making an alien to become our friend, but also if needed to have intercourse with them. That's one of the simple meaning of acceptable. That's what we are aliens in the sight of the Lord God, Ephesians 2, 1 and 2. We were enemies in his mind, but through Christ he has made us one. He has called us nigh. Therefore, run what? We are not only just going to be his friends, but he wants to have with us the intercourse. And that's what he wants us, the power given to us, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, doing nothing but the great will of God the Father. That's what he wants through our lives. So to preach the acceptable year of Lord God in this time given for us, delivering them out. If we would truly believe the power given to you in the word of the Lord my God and how powerful is that word. If you would be not a practical atheist by not believing it, but rather humbly subjecting your life to carry your cross every day and follow my Christ every day and become to join as disciple and grow up as grammatias and in return become what Lord God the Father intended throughout the whole world to make disciples. Because that's the power given to us. And that's the duty and the privilege given to us. And every individual believer have to make another unbeliever to look to become the disciple of Lord God through our holy manner walk of life. And when we have been given so much of power and if we don't believe it, Satan needs only that one point that you don't believe it. Satan needs only that one point that you doubt it. And it loves to produce in you every mannerism of sickness, fear, worry, mental anxiety. Because you are off the target. You are not doing the will of God the Father, therefore you are since out of the target of the will of God the Father. It loves to produce on this earth nothing but to eat your own human excreta mixed with urine. That's how Satan leads you at ultimately when you look back in the judgment seat of Christ you will go to see and think what a great thing Lord God the Father had given me to do but I neglected and rejected to listen to the word of Christ being taught by his pastors on this earth those who came from the right hand of God the Father whose work is to Jeremiah 3.15 to feed you with knowledge and with understanding whose work is to show forth for you in Ephesians 4 8 through 13 to make you to be perfect and complete in the complete will of God the Father and everything you need to be aware, dear brother, and how unique our Lord of our God is to send those bona fide, gifted, male, spiritual pastor teachers with the power of God, the Holy Spirit operating in them. So that you can be aware about the cunning fables of Satan or the strategy of Satan and be aware of your calling in Christ. So that you can stand firm by your offensive techniques, not defensive techniques any longer. If an unbeliever could slap you on the face in the court of law, then be aware you are using defensive techniques there, but rather you haven't made the offensive weapon of the sword of the spirit to operate in your soul and let go. Whichever that could be, dishonoring to Lord God in your life and cut it off and put to death. You don't want to look such kind of a great offensive strategy of the sword of the Spirit in you to operate and to make you to be the child of Lord God. This all seems to be our moral stories or for cartoons what they would say. At the end they have been one together. But in reality dear brethren you have to be. Because we all are called to be brethren. Adelphos and Adelphoi. Being born in one womb through the sperm of Christ. And we have to take care considering the things pertaining to Lord's work, encouraging one another. Our enemy is Satan, our enemy is that our own ignorance, our enemy is our own flesh, our enemy is our own arrogance. And our enemy always love to fall into the categories of this world, to fulfill the lustful patterns of your old sin nature. 
So encourage one another to get in them the image of Christ conforming to the full major stature of his thinking so that you also can shine like the way half Stephen shined like an angel they saw his face. That's complete transformation into the light. And if the word of the Lord of God operates in us, not only being the glory of Lord God on this earth, being witnessing for his truth, even we will be also completely transformed, like the way how Stephen was transformed to look like angel. Your every thought, your every deed in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit would be so great and unique. Because you are seeking and searching the glory of God the Father, not the glory of this world, neither the glory of man. You are looking only the glory of God the Father in you, top to the bottom, from head to toe of your feet. It is nothing but the Word, the Word, the Word. When we cut, it is not the blood that could come out from your hands or legs. It has to be the Word of the Lord my God. Figuratively, I am saying that. Such is the privilege, such is the power, such is the teaching given to us. But you have been hindering yourself to be single yet. Therefore, every individual believer in Christ has been given to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. What for? The reason is very simple. So that Satan cannot tempt you like the way how Eve was single. And it caused her to fall for sin. That's what we look passing the patsy from man to Eve, from Eve to Satan. This woman whom you gave, she gave me the fruit. And Eve says, this serpent defiled or deceived me. That's how they are very happy to pass down the patsy, not taking the responsibility. In our examination, if we look, she added, she deleted and she gave less emphasis. She deleted Lord God and she said only God. She added not even to touch rather than the word to eat. And she neglected the importance and the emphasis of the word when you said, surely you shall die, she said, lest you shall die. How well Satan loves to corrupt your mind. But every believer is in a constant angelic conflict, Ephesians 6. Every believer have to be aware of our, of our warfare is not with the forces of flesh, but with the unseen forces of darkness. As a soldier, you can be alert in Christ, taking your position only through the word of the Lord. What are you in Christ being sealed, secured, being called to be the Son of God? What are you positioned in Christ? You have been called to trample Satan under your feet. And Satan knows, till you are not mature enough in the word of the Lord, my God, you cannot be like Paul, or in fact, indeed, conforming to the image of Christ, like Christ. It knows very well you cannot be there till you don't give your number one priority to the word of the Lord, my God, diligently. Therefore, it causes you to search the details of life. It causes you to worry the details of life. And in return, it goes on to produce in your brain sicknesses. Like we read that word, depentio conjecture. It is where the collagen goes back to hit to each other in the body and it produces such sicknesses because of extreme pressure, trust and distrust. If Lord God be with us, who could be against us, says the word. So why you worry? You are more than warriors of aliens, says the Lord. So why we worry? Even though there is death at your home, why you worry? You have the work of the Lord, go back and do it, doesn't he say? Let the dead bury the dead, but you go and do the work of my Christ first. So why you worry about the details of life? We have a burden, we have our time every day, every breath, every second, not to make the grace of Lord my God to wane, but rather use it for the worth of calling wherewith he has called you with all lowliness and subjection to the truth. Because our battle is unique, our life is unique, our work is unique. 
Our calling is unique. Our privilege is what they have given is unique. The same thing you will not get back even in the past or in the future. What we have now is a great joy. It's a great joy that in this entire Christendom, right from the 33rd, when Lord our God began the day of Pentecost till to the time of the rapture of the church, every individual believer ought to be the greatest glory of Lord God on this earth. But we hardly find how many of the people would be responding to be the greatest glory of truth on this earth. When we go back in the seven years of judgment of the Bhima throne of Christ, we will look. How much of wood and stubble has been produced rather than gold, silver or precious stones by neglecting their work, by neglecting their calling, by neglecting their purpose. No matter however the times may be without the word of the Lord my God, but there was the truth of the Holy Spirit of Christ working in them. We can look back into one of the series covered by in God channel, the thin things. When we look into the Ireland from the 3rd century, how they were, St. Patrick, we come back over there and we look so many great, great women as well, Hilda. And so many other great men who have been there used by Lord God to produce his work effectively in and around the world. Therefore the phrase, the earth is full of his glory. And right now after the reformation movement from the 15th century, particularly from the 18th century when you come back to the Plymouth Brethren, the way how they were teaching the word of the Lord in exegesis. Now if you look into the 21st century, completely deadlock. Because you have come up with some bunch of idiots who do not even have the bona fide gift of the Holy Spirit of the Lord who have come for the survival of the belly. And the word what we look in Revelation 2 and 3, Satan's synagogue, Satan's throne and Satan's copulation point in producing false pastor teachers. They are ample to the core. Fighting out for denominations rather than coming back and looking what are the standards of exegeomai when my Christ, my Lord, my rock said in John 1.18 exegeomai the word. And why will Satan tremble? <laughs> it will laugh at you. But every day is a new day. Every day is a new day renewed in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to produce new strength, to produce new power, to look upon new calling in the Lord. Every day is a new. Every day is a fresh. That's the power what we have in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through His Word. That's the stone what we are performing so that we can use the slingshot when needed. To crack the head of Goliath, what the world believes now, the third eye. Exactly on that skull you look, how it was been broken up. And for the people who are searching the third eye, maybe that point, look into it. Because Bible gives right information. Because nothing on this world is right and correct apart from the word of the Lord my God. All things are fragmentary imaginations being made under the sun or under the light. But Isaiah 46 5 says, Before the sunlight could come, it is He who existed. Therefore, the Trinity of Lord God should be praised. And such a Lord God has given to us in, in His name this completed revolution. And now for us in the church age, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit has given to walk in the spirit of truth who leadeth us into all truth and nothing but the truth for the reason of glorifying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then why is it we are still behind? What is it that is hindering you? Why you want to break up your head? Dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer and we shall look. In Ecclesiastes 10, we have some information to learn. Scientify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of this word. We have come a long way of introduction, that's why. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we consider these things, we pray. Lord God, the Holy Spirit could enter and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. Looking basically first from Proverbs 16, we have a word which teaches to us that he that laboreth laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it to it of him. And the word meant to say, the soul of one who is laboring or who is going on to become wretched one upon wretched one. That's what the world is, they say. Before the word of the Lord, my God, could come, they say in their own arrogance and ignorance that we existed earlier. This is what the way they labor and what they make their mouth, their mouth to talk those things. And for example, if you would look, some of the English authors as well who have been called as Christians, 
They say earlier it was the goddess of Baal or Kali or whatever they may be a woman. She is a woman because she is the giver of life. But constantly the people came from the Israelites and they changed that woman into a god of man which is called as Yahweh. <laughs> Such is the corruption of their thinking being blinded by Satan in their, in their eyes. Therefore, in the same manner, for us long back in Proverbs 16.24, he says, The soul of the one who is toiling, he is toiling for him, and he presses on the mouth of him to speak the things what he has toiled for. That may include his false doctrine, that may include his false denominations, that may include each and everything to corrupt the word of the Lord. For example, you look today, every day has to be Bible teaching in our pulpits. That's what the plan is. Though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. But the people, they have toiled themselves in that denominational standards being under the influence of Satan. So what do they say? They say it's not possible for them to do the work of the Lord any longer. And what they continue? They toil and to talk. We shall make weekly ones of our sermons and not every day. That's what they have toiled. That's what they have labored for. And therefore he says, an ungodly man is going to dig evil. And the word meant to say for us, decadence, who is, is nothing but an ungodly man. And what is that word decadence meant to say for us? It is saying for us, these are the sons of Belial, worthless sons. That's what the word is, worthless sons come from Satan. And what they excavate, they excavate nothing but disagreeable things which are not in the word of the Lord my God. And on the lips of them, and on the lips of him, it is like an inflammable fire. And whatever they want to talk, like saying that they have that fire upon them, the fire of the Holy Spirit, but no, it's not the fire of the Holy Spirit, it's the fire of their own lusts and their own methods of making their lives to be survival on this earth. Why? Because they're coming up to dig. What to excavate again? Nothing but disagreeable standards which are not been there in the mind of the Lord. And what are the disagreeable standards? They love to make you to become morally good. They love to make you to come and say, if you be baptized and pay this money, you will be saved. This is what they are. Faith plus works they want to add. But with Christ, it is faith alone in Christ alone. They don't want to emphasize the truth. So what they're excavating? They're excavating disagreeable things. They say, come to church weekly once, come and pay monthly once your tithe, that's enough. But they forgot to say to them, you have to join as a disciple and grow up as a grammar, as an in return. You have been burdened with the Lord's word to go and make disciples of all the nations. They don't want to teach that. So what they come up, they love to dig up. These are what? These are the sons of Belial, says the word of the Lord. And what a shame it will be for us to be filled in our churches today with such sons of Belial in our midst. Because since he's laboring and he's toiling for himself, he says, what I've done is correct. For example, rather than mastering yourself in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, the theological colleges where you have studied, and since you have examined yourself to study, apart from this Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, into other standards of like church history, or making your biblical studies as number one priority, then you say your doing is correct. And you go on to continue what your teachings are right, saying that you have such and such profession. Because you have been qualified in such and such thing. But as far as the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic is concerned, you are 0, 0, 0, 0. You do not even know the importance of those original languages of the scriptures. And you want to be a pastor there. Who these are? They have labored, they say. Therefore, their mouth craveth for right. Because we have labored, we have put a lot of time, we have put a lot of investment of money. And that's how these people they are today in our pulpits. And people love to have such men. But the word says, such ungodly men. He doesn't give a designation as godly by the Holy Spirit of Lord. He gives them only one thing. Sons of Belial, you are, I don't know who you are. It's very harsh for us here, isn't it? He calls you directly sons of Belial. He doesn't even call you to be sons of God. He calls you sons of Belial, worthless. Derivation from the word Baal. Again, that is nothing but devil. 
And what do the ungodly men do? They dig, they excavate. The sons of Belial excavate the, the disagreeable things. And their lips, upon their lips, they will always have fire inflammable. Do you know the difference between flammable and inflammable and non-flammable? Flammable like a wood, it needs to be ignited. Inflammable, without ignition, it will crack out. You know what they are? The so-called miracles crowd, the tongues crowd, the healings crowd. The crowd where they allow to talk to you in shirts of their own theology. By selling their oil, by selling their kerchiefs, in fact in needed, they will also sell their urine for you to taste. Like Dalai Lama who is going to put his excreta and urine and make medicines and sell to the entire world. So it is. These are the people, he says, inflammable fire. Without any ignition, they bust out. When the word of the Lord, my God, right from the past when we look, the righteous word of the Lord, in fact, indeed, when the time of Isaac came, he asked the question, how long, O Lord? He says, till the places get desolate. By that he meant to say what? You will find very few people for the right word. Because sustaining in the right word demands to carry your cross every day and follow my Christ. But inflammable fire doesn't require any ignition because it can easily bust off and give you false testimonies and you will be attracted to them so that you could get free from your sicknesses. But the word of the Lord my God says, when you are in the word of Christ, there is nothing of a sickness to you. And they want to develop the schemes. And you know what? The present pastors, when they're standing and preaching in the pulpits, we look. I even ashamed to call them as pastors, whether they're really or not. Because we can know them by their works. Their works is not making disciples. Their works is not going to make them to become grammateers. We know them. They're liars. These are the sons of Belial's. We know them very well. They know what they have in their mind. They don't have the words like the complete sanctification process of the work of redemption of my Christ on the cross, like propitiation, expiation. And then the word redemption or unlimited atonement. They don't have those words in their mind. They don't have their words in the, to be on their lips to talk and to teach because they have to be given with great understanding. Do you know what they have? They have all mannerism of sicknesses in their words. They say such and such person is suffering with such disease, with such disease. He's having problem with the bone. He's having problem with the kidney. He's having problem with the liver. This is what you will find. You go back and search them in the YouTube. In my country, India, like these sons of Belial who have become worst. They don't teach the word. If ever they want to teach, they want to coat you with sugar-coated preaching. That's it. Because they don't go back to look and dig the word of the Lord of God, no matter how great preachers they may be on this earth for themselves. To look, they have so many subscribers for them in the YouTube. And do you know what they're doing? They're spreading their filth. And these are the sons of Belial to the core. And they will have, at the judgment seat of Christ, their rewards. Don't worry, we shall absolve them. Anything that is against the will and the work of Lord God the Father on this earth. He did not spare his own son on the cross. Far less you and I can think they could be spared because they did some God's work now. They cry out in Matthew 7, stating to the point, Lord, Lord, we have done such and such things in your name. We have preached, we have done this, we have done that. It says, workers of iniquity, the word in the Greek, anomas, against the standards and the order and the stability of Bible doctrine being revealed for us. It doesn't spare you. You may think you could be spared. What the standards I have given for you right from the beginning, John 1, 18, exegiomai. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 27, anagenisco, to analyze and exegete the word. So that I shall not let go iota upon iota, even carrier upon carrier, Matthew 5, 17 through 19. So that every word of the Lord of God has to be fulfilled. In Colossians 1, 24 to 29, making every believer perfect and complete. Matthew 13, 52, where he says, this is the kingdom of Lord God, wherewith they shall be filled. Everyone giant as disciples, growing up as grammatias. 
And in 2 Corinthians 4, or well as 11, he says, the marine my care that is going on today in my mind daily, what they're teaching in the pulpits. 2 Corinthians 4, he says, though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed. What the standards the Bible has given and what the idiotic moron standards, what you people are practicing, how would you expect to be there? Producing goats rather than sheep. being the agents of satan to the core therefore the word calls the lips and the lip of him will be like a fire inflammable but the word of the lord of our god teaches to us dear brethren those who are constantly growing up day by day it takes time if I shave off my head and my beard, it takes time to grow, minimum two or three months, isn't it? How much more, Lord God, the Father would cause you to be in Christ, to constantly graduate in the word of the Lord my God. Therefore, he says through, Apo through Apostle Paul, in one place for six months, in one place for three months, or one year, two years, or three years, I spent with my own hand, my own rent I paid, and went along to teach them day and night with tears. What is this morons they're thinking? Weekly ones assembling. Where is that in the Bible? Assembling once in a week for bread breaking, they think and they continue because they say they don't have time. In this small span of time given to you on this earth, if you don't prove yourself to be faithful to the Lord, you will prove yourself to be regretting at the judgment seat of Christ to the cause. Therefore, dear brethren, the sons of Belial who excavate the word what we call as evil, even in Ecclesiastes 10.8 he says, one exploring nothing but a pit, he shall fall into it, he shall be cast down according to that rule. As you measure, so you will be measured back. You want to deceive the people by not giving them the right word, but rather you want to make up your standards according to that wherewith you think that is right, you will be also put back in the same pit. And then he says, the one breaching, the one who is breaking up the fence, the hedge, he shall bite the serpent or the serpent shall bite him. What is that serpent? Again, we look very well. He is going to take up as an inheritance nothing but the uncleanling nature or having your experience as Eve had in the time of breaking that great hedge. What is that hedge? Nothing but the wall of fire told for us in Zechariah 2.5. Wall of fire is nothing but the word of the Lord my God. And the greater you love to break that hedge, the greater you want to be far away from that hedge. Do you know what the word says? You will be given an inheritance by Satan, an experience of what Eve had that will be given to you as a gift by the bite of Satan. Therefore, he teaches for us, if anyone would ask for a fish, will your father give you a snake? The fish with two loves, two fishes and five loves, what he made the people to eat. In that place, if you're going to get a snake, what is it? It is worth enough to think it's cunning wisdom. Snake is always cunning. But here, when you have been growing up in the word of the Lord of our God, you will be like that. Two loves and five fishes wherewith they have been given to the entire people to eat. That is what the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would do. But the snake, what did it do? It gave a bite of experience to fall from the place where Lord God the Father intended them to be. So you being evil, you know even in these words, you don't give a snake for your son when he asks for fish. Then how much more being the sons of Lord God? And to make this entire world to know about the discipleship of program of Christ. We are paying back to Lord our cunning wisdom rather than feeding them as Lord my God fed them with their two fishes and five loaves. We have to be careful, dear brethren, of a calling in the church age. Therefore, looking upon the time, you have to be the communicator of Bible doctrine. Looking upon the time, every day is essential for us to look how great we have to walk in the spirit of truth. 
looking upon the time we should be the people really available to the work of the Lord as he says in Isaiah 49 6 I have called you for this and you thought it a little thing I've called you to restore and take care of the things which have already guarded but you did not I've called you to become like a light until to the end of the earth as being a salvation to this people but you did not and how we are today if Lord God the Father could raise the same series of questions against us as he rose towards the Israelites where we shall stand but he says for us we are inexcusable in 2 Thessalonians 1 7 the wrath of the Lord of our God is abiding upon them first those who do not know the Lord God Ida that is having full full acquisition of the knowledge of Bible doctrine and on them those who don't obey the gospel of the Lord that's the second category first for us the wrath of the Lord God abides therefore grieve not the Holy Spirit of my Christ squelch not the Holy Spirit of my Christ in dwelling in you but rather he is your joint partaker he is your companion when he was alone Satan attacked and if you have been out of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit you will be attacked and if you're constantly in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit no matter what are the circumstances you will be always thankful to the Lord making melody in your heart according to the word of the Lord my God which richly dwells in you you'll be thankful to the circumstances as Job was thankful and he will constantly be there to look upon as James 4 7 says for us resist the devil you will be constantly there by making yourselves to be available to the word of the Lord by God by serving Lord God and resisting the devil Therefore, dear brethren, you need to understand these things very carefully. Be not double-minded by submitting yourselves and serving yourselves to Lord God, to put in order again, to put in advice again, and resist the word says for us, antistheme, that is to set oneself against or withstand, oppose, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's what your brethren, he will run away from you because he knows very well if you are in the word of the Lord, my God, you are going to trample it under its feet. Therefore, it doesn't want to be trampled, so it runs away. Submit, resist, and then Satan flees off. But if you don't submit to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine daily to become his disciple, you cannot resist the devil but rather devil will take charge of you to deceive you to doubt in the word of the Lord and to make you to search and seek the frantic search of happiness on this earth the lust of flesh the lust of eye and the pride of life and it makes you all to look the details of life as number one priority not the work of the Lord my God so submit yourselves to Christ, commit yourselves ultimately to the Lord my God, daily carrying his cross, becoming his disciples. And Lord God would use you greater than David because he has called us to confirm to the image of his dear beloved son. Dear brethren, think over these issues. We have already been given a token of love or a sign that we have been in the heaven as heavenly citizens right here on this earth as well but only thing we have to confirm to his image our inner mind to the glorious resurrection body of my Christ which we are going to get so submit yourselves to Lord God then you can resist the devil and then the devil flees away from you dear brethren think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth and gives us that which is rightful and needful for us to be in the word of the Lord of our God all the days of our life on this earth and glorifying him by becoming the glory of Lord God to the highest think about these issues we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are without Christ without hope and without eternal life Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you will you my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. 
believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sir Thandalagam. Herald the word in season and out of season, because of Dharmatrama witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one Dharmatrama witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharmatrama witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and do not worry besides nature, the entire and very close to your witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us, O Lord, to be indwelt by the Trinity in us, so that, Father, the cunning fables of Satan shall not operate in us as long as we are in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit. To such great provision and plan in this church age, so that every believer in this church age could be the complete glory, to be conforming to the image of your dear beloved Son, and fully grown up to the complete mature state of his thinking. You have given for us this completed canon and the prayer of ultimate privileges, O Lord. What else can we ask, O Lord, rather than to carry your cross humbly all the days of our life, no matter however the circumstances or details of life could lead us, and not to worry, committing everything into thy hands, looking forward unto my Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, running the race that has been kept before us. Because everything you have designed, you have designed in your grace to overcome it. And why we take to our mind, O Lord, because when your grace is sufficient for us to carry each and everything in this life. So that, Father, only thy name be glorified in each and every work we do in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Such as diligently sovereign Lord, and seek those in offense who in us, lead us in the way of everlasting truth, and help us to be the faithful witnesses of you in this era till we could come back home to preach the acceptable year of your Son and you and Lord God the Holy Spirit in our life. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen.